in this scenario when we are very much in need of delivering our content with the help of powerpoint presentation it is important to understand the importance of this particular topic we all can prepare an effective presentation and we have already done this but now this is the time to make it more effective because in previous days we were having the face to face interaction with the students at that particular time we could have the clarity with them but nowadays it is important that our ppt is having an impact upon the receiver or the students in a way so that they are in a position to understand what we are trying to say because face to face interaction is not possible in this pandemic situation now as ppp you can see over there in powerpoint presentation this p letter has a very important role whether it is plan purpose prepare or practice purpose determining purpose is a very important element that we cannot skip because when we are having a purpose with us we will be able to understand that why we are going to give this particular presentation and when we are in a position to understand the question why we will be able to answer this particular question in the form of what how when where and why so purpose is very much important then comes the plan and present that we are going to discuss in further slide when we are discussing about who what how when and where we have to understand what who refers to who refers to audience here in this scenario as we can see for teaching fraternity the audience is a student and that is why we know the composition or the understanding level of the audience then comes the what when we have to answer the question of what it is important that we have to understand what topic or you know, sub topic that we have to inculcate in our powerpoint presentation and in that particular situation you have to also understand about the coverage structure and the layout of the content coming to the next one that is how how also becomes very important because sometimes it is possible that it may not be directly related with the understanding part but it has a great impact upon the understanding of the audience because if it has the disturbances because if design or the layout has not been chosen properly they may mar the effectiveness of the whole powerpoint presentation and that's why choosing themes images and animations becomes very much important and at the last comes the delivery part where we have to understand how we are going to present our powerpoint presentation are we sharing the ppt only is ppt is having the narration or is ppt is having both narration and the video as well at the last comes the feedback as you all know that communication is incomplete without feedback and that is why it is important that at the last we have to have the question answer session so that we can understand the understanding level of the audience whether the audience has understand the has the understanding of the content or not to make it more effectful we have to anticipate the questions well in advance but in this situation when we are not having the face to face interaction with the audience or where we are not present at in front of the audience what we can do is we can inculcate quiz quiz also in the form of google forms we can have the google forms quiz and we can share the link with the students so that they can answer and then we can understand whether the students are understanding it properly or not in the next slide we are going to discuss about the topic which is related to the audience as the acronym itself suggests there are certain keywords that are important to understand when we are talking about audience and in this the most important element is customization customization with respect to the expectation because obviously the need need over here in this context is to get the knowledge of a particular topic of a particular subject but we as in the last uh, in the previous session we um, in the webinar they were discussing about the centralized learning that means we have to focus on the audience we have to focus on the student centric approach there we have to customize our element in a way so that can we can meet the expectation of the 
students coming to the next part that is content content is including in itself the three most important elements when we are discussing about powerpoint presentation it is coverage the structure and language coverage that means we are choosing the topics and sub topics in a way so that we can best meet the expectation of the audience when we are talking about the structure it should be categorized in three parts that is first of all you have to say what you are going to say second say it and third you have to say what you have already said that means it is in the form of introduction main content and conclusion this should be the structure of your powerpoint presentation and which should be well evident to the student also when it is coming uh, to the part of language it is very important element when we are having a content to be delivered there conciseness clarity coherent compact there are so many when we are talking about conciseness that means we have to be brief in expression we cannot in have the information overload over there at the same time whatever we have to say we have to say it in the minimum number of words clarity of thought and clarity of expressions are two terms that should be very much clear in the mind of the sender that means at your own part we have to understand what we are trying to communicate and we have to communicate in the best possible way so that the clarity of understanding is there in the mind of the students at the same time there should be it should be error free when i'm talking about the term coherent it that means the idea should be logically linked with each other there should not be a gap between the ideas otherwise there will be distortion of message in the mind of the audience there are certain do's and don'ts when we are talking about the content we have to make sure that we have defined the coverage carefully our slide should not be very lengthy otherwise it can become very boring and sometimes um, the students may feel bored also so we have to make sure that whatever topic we are choosing we are not going beyond 10 to 15 or max to max 20 slides depending upon the purpose of your uh, powerpoint presentation and it should not go beyond 20 to 25 minutes sub topics uh, must relate to the main topic so that uh, coherence element that we discussed earlier should be there and we have to be specific and we should use simple language also when i'm talking about don'ts what we should avoid obviously avoiding lengthy presentations uh, will be helpful and then complicated hierarchy that means there should not be topics sub topics then again sub categories are there because it may distort the comprehension then jargons we should not use jargons because jargons are specific to the organization to the institutes and it may not be understandable by the general public design part designing consists in itself uh, various themes uh, color theme visual elements bullet schemes font styles and so on when we have to choose color, choose color theme we have to see the purpose because what your purpose is if you have to show so many tables so many charts or graphs at that particular time your background should be a little light so that uh, whatever content is there it is well evident and uh, at the same time if you have to focus on content which is in writing you can choose the darker slides as well when i'm talking about color theme based on organization it is like organizations have their own identity and by seeing that it should be evident that this powerpoint presentation is related to this particular organization as a suggestion i can tell that we can have we the faculty of uh, vidyalanka polytechnic can have a common template on which we can prepare our e content so that by seeing that particular the first slide the student can understand that this ppt is belonging to vidyalanka polytechnic bullet scheme should not be very complicated font style and visual elements we will discuss in the later slides as well when i'm talking about the do's and don'ts font size should not be for the headings it should not go beyond 36 to 44 and for text or the sub topics it should not go beyond 24 to 30 legible font should be there sans serif is the preferable fonts and images and uh, animations that you are using should strengthen the concept strengthen the understanding and should not have the distraction with the main content and that's why we have to be very careful careful while choosing these particular things 
what should be avoided what we do sometimes we are giving some other color or we are capitalizing a certain word to make it uh, to emphasize on a particular word but over using of these things may mar the effectiveness of the content and at the same time images and animations when we are putting that images uh, especially we have to maintain the aspect ratio because when we are disturbing the aspect ratio the images get blurred and then it doesn't look good in the powerpoint presentation we should always avoid so many legends in a in a single chart because that may make your powerpoint present uh, your chart complicated and uh, will be difficult to understand in one slide there should not be more than six bullet uh, points because uh, we cannot have a kind of paragraph over there we cannot have more than six bullet points because then it will be clutter when we are coming about the delivery part as i said that when it is a ppt only it should be self explanatory because uh, the student has to understand the content with the help of the reading so whatever you have read, written if it is not clear or if uh, it is not self explanatory sometimes uh, the students may not be able to understand what you are trying to tell then comes the ppt with audio narration at that particular time focus on paralinguistic skills becomes very important and when we are talking about ppt with audio and video focus on both paralinguistic and uh, body language is there what are the do's and don'ts related to this as i said paralinguistic skills paralinguistic skills are non verbal vocal cues that helps to enhance the quality of the narration so here we have to focus on pause pitch voice modulation pronunciation and articulation at the as the part of the paralinguistic skills when i'm talking about pause it denotes the transition of thoughts sometimes if to give emphasis also we use pause so it becomes very important that we are giving pause in a sentence to make it more understandable that now the thought is going to be changed when i'm talking about voice modulation if you are talking in a same pitch it becomes monotonous and boring for the receiver so we have to make sure pronunciation as uh, english is not our mother tongue so sometimes it is possible that we may have the regional impact upon our Uh, way of speaking so we have to make sure that we are seeing that what is the correct pronunciation of a particular word and then only we are pronouncing it body language is also a key element when video is also there so we have to make sure that whatever gestures and postures we are using is good and it is not uh, basically um, disturbing the whole element and uh, it is enhancing the quality of your presentation as well maintaining eye contact is very important we cannot read the content over there because then you will not be able to have an eye contact and then it masks the effectiveness of the whole powerpoint presentation what should be avoided we should avoid non stop speaking as i am doing we should try to avoid being monotonous and for this we can have a small anecdotes or small stories if possible to make it more interesting as i have already said that we should not read the content and body posture should be taken care of because it has a very great impact upon the audience this video will help you to understand what i'm trying to tell with the help of the animation in this there are various do's and don'ts that we are going to discuss about while making our effective presentation more effective and in this continuation as i said that since sans serif font should be used we should not use the distracting fonts because it sometimes it is not legible for the students or the audience you can say in a broader way so we have to choose the fonts accordingly which are clear and understandable the second point is that we cannot underline the whole content because sometimes it may uh, like the students may think that it is a kind of hyperlink and uh, misconception is there so font size font color and font style should be used for emphasis and not for the distraction in the mind of the receiver so we have to be very careful while choosing all such things when i'm talking about the font size a smaller font size will not be having the legibility and that's why when the students will see that they will not be able to see the uh, content properly so you have to choose the choose the read, readable font at that particular time then comes 
the most important element that overload the viewer with shapes animations objects and sometimes information as well so we have to be very cautious that we are not having the bombardment of such things at in the presentation your infographic should be easy to understand and relatable also when i'm talking about the six bullet points in a slide that means paragraph should not be there and you have to make sure that you are not using more than six bullet points because then the understanding will be but, uh, quite difficult for the reader hazy backgrounds blur background should be avoided because then your content may get lost in that particular thing so we have to make sure that the background is very simple and uh, plain kind of uh, background which is enhancing the quality of your uh, powerpoint presentation and not marring the effectiveness of that and at the last we have to make sure that uh, we are not having the crazy uh, animations in uh, to make the effect in the powerpoint presentations because it is disturbing the attention of the audience and it is not required at all so what we have to do is we have to choose simple animations and if possible we can have a simple powerpoint presentations thank you everyone thank you for your patient listening and now we are open for a question answer session with this i am uh, sharing the reading material that you can refer if you want to go if you want to read further thank you